put in the setting, you're kind of pushed out into a situation where you have to take care of others and you have to understand others' emotions, even when they don't tell you specifically what they are. When you're there, you can feel a presence. You, you can sense it. I was really moved. I was really emotional and what, how our people lived and how they were treated. It changes, it changes them, man. It changes me a lot this past two weeks. My adopted mom, Cherokee mom, Maydeen, her proud um, that I'm out here helping you guys, my brothers and sisters, along the way to get home, okay? That's the most important part. Please be safe, don't take chances. You know, and uh, just take care of them bikes because they'll get you anywhere you want to go. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Ready? The forced removal of our people happened in 1838. 10,000 of our people were removed from Georgia through Tennessee, Kentucky. Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, and in, in, in Indian Territory, now Oklahoma. It's, it's thought that we lost approximately 4,000 people. The first bike ride was in 1984, but the planning for it started in 1983. There was already a youth leadership program within the tribe under our education department. In 84, we were pretty much on our own, you know, no one knew who we were or what we were doing. It took us a month, 1,100 miles to, to get home. And so, yeah, I was one of the initial 20, and once we got out there, we didn't ride as a huge group like we do now. We, we split up into four different groups based on our ability. I was in a four-man group, four guys. So just the four of us out there, we had to depend on each other. You know, we draft for each other all day and shared water, shared food, and just kept each other company. Are y'all comfortable doing the zoom down the hill and shooting up the momentum thing? Some of us. Yeah, I think some of us. Because we trained, that's all we trained on at back in Oklahoma on our hills because of Missouri. We're getting ready for Missouri. Hopefully. People were curious about what we were doing and they would stop and ask questions and we would tell them what we were out there for and then a few times we heard people say, hmm, Cherokees, huh? I thought you all were all gone. Uh, it amazed me actually, personally, that people thought we were dis had disappeared. And that was part of the reason for the ride too, is to go out there and educate the American public that we were still here, that we were commemorating the Trail of Tears and uh, hoping that federal government would mark that route because it wasn't marked. We were using paper maps. We'd write down turn by turn directions on our little uh, bags on the front of our bikes. We'd had those written down to say to turn. In 1987, Congress started allocating funds to start marking Trail of Tears routes. And I'd like to think we had a part in that. I knew there was more to it than what we were being told. And I think getting that at such a young age was vital to who I am today. Yeah. Second mountain, it sucks. Yeah. I still haven't climbed better in my life yeah. than I did that day. Every day that we felt that it was difficult, it reminded us that it was nothing compared to what they endured. We talked about the heat. They had freezing cold temperatures. We would need a break. They didn't get a break. We had bikes. We didn't have to walk. We had adequate supplies, and they didn't. To be able to go back, honor those who came before me, to bring attention to their survival, to their resilience, 
I am thankful for being chosen to be a participant in the Remember the Rubble Bike Ride. We had a first language speaker with us on the entire ride. It was so amazing to say, hey, how do you say this? How do you say that? And then to practice it with one another and to say it. We were at Rattlesnake Springs in Tennessee. We actually sing a song in Cherokee called Orphan Child. The song originated from our ancestors that were on the trail. Uh, Jack Baker, who's one of our historians and former councilmen, said, you know, this is one of the first times that this land has heard Cherokee in a long time. We've had so many people tell us that, you know, I'm not Cherokee, but I feel for your people. I'm not Cherokee, but I want to tell your history. And the thing is, this is not just Cherokee history. This is human history. This happened to people. You don't have to be Cherokee to mourn the lives and injustices that occurred because of the Indian Removal Act. I want our nation to thrive. I want us to continue to teach our history, to inspire others. I can't put a limit on what I hope for Cherokee Nation when there are so many others hoping for just as much, if not more, for our people. The Indian Removal Act was meant to solve the Indian problem. We're not the problem. We are resilient. We are strong. We are not going anywhere. Si, on We are still here. <laughs>